What's the word, y'all? One no-brainer trade target for every NBA team is today. Um, it came out a couple days ago on Bleach Report, but I haven't had the time to react to it with the NBA Finals and all the stuff going on. But I'm I'm here finally, and I'm going split screen because I just like the way this looks aesthetically. I just think this is a, a cool, cool thing. You know what I'm saying? If I want to clip it for TikTok, this is the perfect thing for me. And I got the article over here, and I look like I'm actually reading. When in reality, I'm usually not. All right, let's get into the first one, which is the Atlanta Hawks Rudy Gobert. And Grant Hughes did an amazing job because he did it. Uh, he got this, why they need him. And then they also got, can they get him? Which I think is amazing because sometimes I react to these articles, whether it be Bleach Report, ESPN, yada, yada, yada. And it's about trades and people that should be targeted by some teams. And then they put it together and it's like, Trade target for the Lakers, Donovan Mitchell. And you think to yourself, how the hell would the Lakers get Donovan Mitchell with the assets they have? But in here, you know, he breaks it down. Do we believe that the Atlanta Hawks have the assets to get Rudy Gobert? I would say yes. Y'all know I'm not actually going out there reading all this old this old thing, not at least not in this video. But I think they do have the assets to potentially get Rudy Gobert. They got some younger players. They got pretty much all of their, um, their draft capital. I think it's a very high possibility that they could put together a trade package if this is the route they want to go. Why they need him, they rank 26 or worse in defense in the last four of the five seasons. I ain't even know that was the case. So yes, a guy like Rudy Gobert has been dominating and, and carrying defenses for the greater part of a greater part of a decade. Huh. Greater part of a decade means at least six years, right? I'll say that about Rudy. I can't I don't have the stats to prove that at the moment, but I'll say for the better part of a decade, Rudy Gobert has been carrying defenses. And if you need defense, hey, Trey Young will get that boy some more touches too. He might just lob it up to him. He didn't lead, let the league and dunk a hundred times. Uh, better better have a decade. I got to Google it now because now I feel stupid. Majority of the past 10 years. Yeah. So so that's at least six. Six is the majority out of 10 if you did not know. Math classes with Kenny Beecham. Next, we got the Boston Celtics, Malcolm Brogdon. This is actually like the third time we've reacted to an article from Bleach Report. And they've connected Malcolm Brogdon and um, Boston Celtics. Do they need him? They don't. I like that because the Boston Celtics don't seem like they need anything. They're two games away from being crowned NBA champions. But if they had to go after somebody this offseason, they're saying that Malcolm Brogdon can be the guy. I'm guessing it has to do, ooh, his low mistake makes him perfect for a backup role. But that's a lot of money to be paying for a backup. Interesting. Um, can they get him? I think he's very gettable for a lot of different organizations because I don't think the Indiana Pacers are looking at him as an extreme valuable piece for their future. So, hey, you know what I'm saying? Give it a little bit of draft capital and a, a young prospect or something that might be enough to get you Malcolm Brogdon this offseason. Brooklyn Nets, OG Ananobi. I'm going out on the assumption that if they're saying OG Ananobi for Brooklyn, can they get him? They're going to mention the name Ben Simmons as being like a swap. Hey, we, we ain't seen Ben Simmons yet, but if you still think that Ben Simmons is the dude... You feel me? Uh, Malcolm, I mean, OG Ananobi will help because we talked about this before, how the Brooklyn Nets this season, especially when we got to the playoff time, was like Kevin Durant and a bunch of guards. And now OG Ananobi gives some size and some great defense. And I really, really love the play that we get from OG Ananobi. Um, he's still one of my favorite young players in the league. I know, you know, he's been up and down with his injury luck and everything. And then when he's playing with Scotty Barnes, he's take like a background role. But I do believe if he got a change of scenery, he can be great. Actually, I don't even think he needs a change of scenery. I think he just need more PT with Scotty so they can figure each other out. Because that would be a crazy wing duo, duo, duo right there. You got to deal with Scotty Barnes and OG Ananobi. But can they get him? The Nets could build a sign and trade package, including restricted free agent Nicholas Claxton. Oh. I know that you need a center over here in um in Toronto, but if I'm definitely not doing an OG Ananobi for Nicholas Claxton on the sign to trade, my boy, you're gonna need to pay a little bit more than that. Cause even if even if this is true that Jake Fisher said that uh he might be disfat dissatisfied at times, there's gonna be other teams that's gonna put together a better package than Nicholas Claxton in a couple picks. You know what I'm saying? I'm good on it. Charlotte Miles Turner, this makes sense, but the Indiana Pacers said um, a, a day or so ago that they believe that Miles Turner is part of their future, so it doesn't like he's going anywhere, but I understand if you're the Charlotte Hornets, you need center play, and Miles Turner feels like he fits perfectly with him being just a stretchability, stretchability of him, protect the paint, they've needed that. Do they have the assets? I think they would if um, the Pacers decide that they want to trade, but I don't know if they will. Rashawn Holmes for the Bulls. Huh. Rashawn Holmes. I was expecting somebody a little bit bigger than the name Rashawn Holmes, but I wouldn't be against him, man. I think Rashawn Holmes could be a really good center. Um, we haven't really had any backup center play this season, like almost zero. 
and we could potentially get that. I don't. What do they say that the package looks like? The Kings need two-way wings, and the Bulls don't have many to spare. Patrick Williams. Okay. Okay. He said he isn't going. All right. Great. We on the same page here. That's a very weird name for the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavs have been in some decent amount of rumors with Kyle Sexton and the LA Lakers and stuff like that. Um, could they get him? Absolutely. You could get pretty much anybody um, that's that's in the tier of Catavius Caldwell Pope for the right price. But they're talking about a sign and trade would make sense. If they want to go younger, if the, the Wizards want to go younger, which makes sense. But, you know, but man, I feel like if I'm trading away Colin Sexton, I want a little bit more than KCP, who's been really, really good for the last couple seasons. Anthony Davis. Whoa. All right, I do. Can you get him, though? Um, as the LA Lakers face the reality that they have a few tradable assets to remake a disappointing and thin roster, okay, the Mavericks have exactly the kind of role supporting players, Dora Finney Smith. Reggie Bullock, Max Kleber, Jalen Brunt. So up in the whole team to get Anthony Davis and have Luke and Anthony Davis as huh, the rest of the rock, man. One of the reasons why the Dallas Mavericks are so good, obviously, number one thing is Luka Doncic, but number two is the others. And a lot of these others that we throw throwing away in this trade play significant, I mean, huge parts of them getting to the conference finals this year. Dora Finney-Smith, amazing. Reggie Bullock, amazing. Max Kleber, amazing. Jalen Brunson, amazing. And, and big old roles. Now, Overall, once we get to that last series, maybe not so much for everyone here, but every single one of these dudes played a huge, huge role in the conference finals run. Do I want to deal all of them away for one player? And do we believe that we can find a replacement for D DFS? Do we believe we can find a replacement for Maxi Kleba? That's a bit iffy. But if the Lakers are, ooh, if I'm the Lakers... Am I, I, this ain't it, bro. I'm sorry. If I'm the Lakers, this ain't it. And I know Anthony Davis, maybe the consistency on AD is a little bit lower than it was two years ago after the uh, the championship because he's had back-to-back -back seasons where he's either super hurt or just relatively, like, disappointing. I don't know if this is the package set. If I'm a Lakers fan and I'm throwing Anthony Davis to the curve, I'm getting back this. I'm like, yeah, we did it, boys. Let's go win a championship. Because even though they were this close to helping Luka get to the finals, I, hey, for role players, it don't take much for them to fall off if that's the word you want to use. Denver Nuggets, John Isaac. That would be interesting to have Jonathan Isaac in Denver just as another switchable big wing. But can they get it done is the real question. Oh, they don't really have an answer here. They're just saying, hey, it's a log jam, something that we all know. If you know anything about the Orlando Magic, you know that their forward slash big man position is a log jam with Window Carter, Mo Bamba being restricted, Chuma Okiki, Franz Wagner, and then the number one overall pick and all of the three prospects are big wing slash bigs. You know what I'm saying? So um, maybe trading for John Isaac is going to be easy because he ain't played basketball in six years. But do I want John Isaac coming off a big injury, a back injury from Michael Porter Jr., and a torn ACL injury from Jamal Murray, all three of these dudes coming back from the injuries at the same exact time? Will that be good enough? Detroit Pistons, DeAndre Aiden. I love it. I love it. There was an entire article on The Athletic about the potential next spot for DeAndre Aiden. Uh, John Hollinger put it, put it together and said that, hey, more likely than not, he's switching teams and Detroit might be the place. Be and I think it will work nicely, man. I think Detroit is working with gas right now with the young players that they have, the max spot that they do have. Um, is DeAndre Aiden worthy of a max I don't know if that even really matters if I'm the Detroit Pistons because he he will just be an overall up, upgrade. And with him only being 24 years old when the season starts and Kay Cunningham looking amazing as he did. And with us having another top, what, five? They have the fifth overall pick in this year's draft? Six? Another top 10 pick. I don't remember what number it is. Um, and then you got to think about all the other pieces that are also there with Sadiq Bay and, you know, Isaiah Stewart. I love I love Beef Stew, but I don't think he's their overall answer at the center position once they want to get back to the playoff contention and all that stuff. DeAndre Aiden can be that because he might not be the most dominant or the most physical force center in the NBA. He's still good for 16 and 10 a night. And that's cool. Can they get him? I think that they could. Even if it is, yeah, sign and trade. Jeremy Grant goes out the door to Phoenix so Phoenix don't lose him for nothing and boom we got ourselves a deal of course contingent on whether or not um the Raptors decide that they want to go hit the mini reset again by getting even younger and getting more people to fit the timeline I'm going to assume that Mr. Mr. Hughes is talking about the pieces like Moses Moody I would feel like Kaminga is untouchable in these type of trades but like Moody Oh, you have to give up Wiggs. Wiggs goes back to Toronto. Wiggs, Moody, Wiseman seems like a big old package for Pascal. But Pascal's all NBA. Pascal's really damn good if you did not know. Andrew Wiggins is the easiest path of matching salaries. And then obviously, if you are the Raps, you want a little bit more than that. Even though Wiggins was an all-star player and uh, Siakam was not that this year, you want a little bit more. You want a little bit more of giving up a player that's under team control for a couple more years for a guy that's going to hit uh, free agency soon. 
And yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree. I agree. I think that would be cool, but I don't really see it as super realistic. Houston Rockets would, I don't like this. I wouldn't, I would not like the Houston Rockets getting Miles Bridges. I just think that that, that locker room is going to be so damn wild. Maybe I do like it because of that. The amount of stories and stuff that's going to come out of that locker room if Miles Bridges is there with Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. and John Wall, maybe. You know what I'm saying? It might actually, I'm here for. I'm here for the the fun that would be the Rockets, Houston, the Houston Rockets locker room. I need a um heart. What's that? What's that show that's about football that follows them like before the season starts? I need one of those with the Houston Rockets if they get Miles Bridges. James Wiseman. Um, for the Indiana Pacers, 100% would love that. Any team that's in the, the early stage of their rebuild, take a flyer on James Wiseman. I don't know what the Warriors think his value is, but if you're like the Indiana Pacers and they're like, oh, we want Malcolm Brogdon and we want this and this and this, anybody that's not Tyrese Halliburton, hell yeah, deal is done, easily. I will be done. I will be down. Kyrie for the clips. I heard um, Kevin O'Connor and um, Bill Simmons basically talking about Kyrie Irving getting to the Clippers, and I was like, that will be the most wild turn of events for Kyrie Irving's career. Um, the way it would happen if it were to happen is like Kyrie takes his his player option or takes an extension. It's like a sign and trade. And the Clippers have so many contracts between like 12 million and 20 million. You package a couple of them. You package, I don't know, Robert Covington and Reggie Jackson and whatever it may be. And boom, the Clippers finally got their point guard and they, they formed their own big three with Y, with PG, and now Kyrie Irving. Um, and I think it would be interesting. Yeah, Zubats, Jackson, Robert Covington, Luke Kennard, Marcus Morris, Norman Powell all make between seven and seventeen million dollars a year. That's insane. Um, so this would be like if the Nets aren't convinced on Kyrie, which it seems like they might not be, at least when it comes to long term contracts. Hey, let's go get a couple of more role players because damn, we didn't have any role players once we were trying to win this year. Uh, but obviously, KD plays a huge part in this, considering KD and Kyrie are like BFFs. Lakers go to uh, Gordon Hayward makes a lot of sense. You get the Russell Westbrook swap, and if you're the the Hornets, you get off an extra year, or you get rid of a contract a year earlier because Gordon Hayward's in the contract for some time. Um, and I, I like this. I really do like this deal. I would like this deal for the Lakers because I believe that when Gordon Hayward is healthy, he's a nice little glue guy that does a little bit of everything. He might not, you know, go crazy and average 25 plus again, or I don't think he ever done that. But still, as far as like being the third option on a solid team, I think he could be that. You just got to keep bro healthy. A high future first round pick for the Grizzlies. I didn't expect to see draft capital in here. All right. I mean, yeah, they. this is the nut, like the third time we've seen the Memphis Grizzlies get a cop-out answer like this. Go tell me what players you think the Memphis Grizzlies need. Because it's a, it's a tough team to pick. It's a tough team to pick a trade for them to do because it seems like everything they've done so far has been perfect, and you don't want to mess up some of the perfectness that is the Memphis Grizzlies, right? So let's cop out and say, let's go get go get more picks. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Nah. Next. We got Bradley Beal for the Miami Heat. Makes a lot of sense. We've talked about this type of trade a thousand times on this channel. I'm not going too far into it. You know what it would look like. It would be these boys right here. Milwaukee Bucks, having another big wing would be great. How do they make this happen? So we saying that, hey, they should go after him, but we don't think that that's really a possibility. I kind of like that. Ben Simmons for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, I don't see a world where the, the um, Brooklyn Nets are trading Ben Simmons for D'Angelo Russell, which is probably what this is going to say. D'Angelo Russell has to be a part of it because the, the money, or maybe not. It wouldn't be hard to imagine Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt, McDaniels, and even Patrick Beverly playing significant. Oh, snap. I thought in this world D'Angelo Russell was the one out the door. But no, I love Vandy. I think I think Vanderbilt V8 is, is a really dope player. And Patrick Beverly... It will be hard to convince the fans. Patrick Beverly, who gave his heart and soul in this season, even though he was meme to hell on NBA Twitter about it, and not just NBA Twitter, in the world about it, he gave his heart and soul to the team to bring us back to the playoffs for the first time in forever. And we're going to ship him out of the door for a guy that hasn't played in a season. You know, it will be hard to convince the fans that. But the people over in Minnesota, they got so many new names in their locker room and stuff. Uh, not in their locker room, in their front office and stuff. Who knows what they're really thinking over there? But they got some very smart people over there. Uh, Pelicans, Jeremy Grant. Eighth overall pick, Vontae Graham, Jackson Hayes. Hey, I'm going to keep it a full stack with you. If this trade is on the table if I'm and I'm the Detroit Pistons, the eighth overall pick, Vontae Graham's got like three more years in his contract. He's not very good. You eat that salary. And Jackson Hayes, bro, Jackson Hayes looked pretty damn good this season. So I'm basically getting two lottery picks for Jeremy Grant because Jackson Hayes is not that far um, off from being drafted. So two lottery picks and a, a bad deal for Jeremy? 
I might say yes to that, bro. I might legitimately say yes to that package. Donovan Mitchell for the New York Knicks is the only thing people are talking about when it comes to Donovan Mitchell. I understand it. What do they have? Because I've seen a couple different things. A New York wouldn't have an asset to get Mitchell without throwing in Barrett. And it seems like a lot of the Knicks fans I talk to are very anti throwing and Barrett to that one. So I just feel like it won't happen. Next one, we have James Wiseman. Same thing I said. Any team that's looking to rebuild, James Wiseman, the guy you want to go after 1,000%. They're talking about Ken Rich and Lou Dort. Ouch. That would, that, would, that would hurt the soul of a lot of OKC fans to see Lou Dort go out the door. But you would be sending him to Golden State. And you can see right now in Golden State, good. <laughs> You'd be sending him to a great situation, you know. And you could get you could get back James Wiseman. But you also have the, th the second overall pick in this year's draft. And that might be a center. It might be Chet. I don't really know. It might be a center. So do we really need both of them? This is like post-draft trade type stuff. Buddy Hill for the Orlando Magic. Why? Oh, just because they didn't shoot the three ball well? I will be okay with them not making any trade to to acquire people. Orlando's doing okay. They're going to have the first overall pick. I, I want to see them ship stuff out more than I want to see them receive new new pieces. Bradley Beal, what are they saying? Are they saying, are they saying what I think I'm saying? Particularly speaking, the Sixers will have to find a taker for Tobias Harris' salary in order to sign Beal. Oh, you know what? I don't think that's crazy to even think about. I feel like there's going to be a team out there that's willing to take on Tobias Harris' contract if you throw in a couple picks on top of it, which might that's the biggest thing for Daryl Morey. But Daryl Morey has never been shy of uh, trading away picks. But also, they kind of gave up some picks to get James Harden, didn't they? So, yeah, that would be that would be a little, little toughy tough. Real tough, actually. Suns, Miles Turner already decided that he's not being traded. But if the Indiana Pacers could somehow sign and do a sign and trade to get DeAndre Aiden there and have to give up Miles, I would do that deal. I would legitimately do that deal, bro. I, legit, I think DeAndre Aiden on one of these young, up-and-coming, rebuilding teams is going to look really, really, really nice. Portland Trailblaze, OJ Ananobi, what's this, a seventh overall pick? Yep. Then we got uh, Jeremy Grant here. If you There's no way, right, the most Kingsian thing, and listen, I know the Kings get bad rap for sure, for sure. If the Kings trade number four for Jeremy Grant, I'm going to be so disappointed in their organization. I'm just going to be so super disappointed. Number four? For Jeremy Grant, who might not even stay after the season is done, I would be scared as hell for them doing that, bro. It just, I just don't like it. I don't love it, bro. Don't love it. Um, yes, I agree with this. The Spurs should be going after Zach Levine, but I'm going to tell them not to. All right? I'm going to tell them not to. Can they get him? Hell yeah. They could just straight up sign him if he decides that he wants to play for the Spurs. That's that, So be it. Jared Allen? Ah. Uh, I, I, I saw in the first year of him and Evan Mobley playing together that they could coexist, but I'm going to assume that they're saying that, A, we believe that um, that Mobley is actually a center eventually, so let's trade away Jared Allen, but that just that, that don't feel right. Can they get him? A straight-up swap of Jared Allen and OJ Ananobi is one of my favorite fake trades. That's, oof, I don't know how to feel about that way. I don't know how to feel about that one. On that, on that uh, Raptors team would be disgusting. That Raptors team would go from a six seed to like a three seed real quick. D how much of a fall off do we get if we're the Cavs, though? You know what I'm saying? It's not like Jared Allen is, is super old and he don't fit the timeline. I don't like that trade if I'm the the Cavaliers at all. Wiggins for the Utah Jazz is oh this is like a Rudy Gobert for Wiggins trade. Because Rudy Go or Rudy Gobert's got a long, super long time left on his contract, and then Wiggins is done after this year, we could potentially get in James Wiseman in that trade. This is if they decide that they want to trade Rudy. I don't hate the package. Um, it, is this is this really like we, what we consider like a dream target though? I don't know. Lastly, we have Tyrese Maxey, and this is in the case of a sign and trade. I would assume. Tyrese Maxey feels like an untouch one of the untouchable young players in the NBA. He just looks so damn good this season. Even if it is for Bradley Beal, I don't want to trade Tyrese Maxey personally. Overall, not a bad article, Mr. Grant Hughes, man. Not a bad article whatsoever. Let me know what you think about what he said about your favorite team. And if you disagree, let me know who you think their uh, right no-brainer. I'm sorry, no-brainer trade target should be.